Hi, this is Scott Garibay, and today I want to talk about Dungeons and Dragons, and I want to talk about the 2023 film Talk to Me, and how horror movies are a good way of understanding the terror of becoming a dungeon master, the 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 inevitable dooming fate of being a dungeon master, and why someone would legitimately be afraid of it. Let's get into this. All right. So, um, so I just watched the 2023 Talk to Me film by A24. It's a horror movie, and I watched it. And I want to talk to you right now because I had made a decision not to talk to, not to watch Talk to Me. And I want to talk about that. And then I want to talk about how some people come to the dungeon master seat, and how we need to start being honest about the journey to the dungeon master seat and the obligations of the dungeon master seat, right? All right, so let's get all the way there. All right, so um, so I'm a huge, I'm, uh, I'm not a huge fan of horror. I actually am a fan of Artur horror movies, okay? So basically, I wanna watch your horror movie, but I refuse to watch a slasher flick. So I've literally never seen a Scream movie, right? I don't care about Scream films. I don't care about Friday the 13th. I don't care about um, Nightmare on Elm Street, right? I don't care about traditional slasher flicks, right? But what I do care about, I think the, the movie that most got me into this was The Skeleton Key. Um, very scary film, very like vibey film. Some people would say it's a thriller. I think it's a fully a horror film. And I think if you're paying attention to it, it's definitely a horror film. Um, but A24 came out of nowhere. And I'm not the only person whose life has been changed by A24. A24 is phenomenally good at making horror movies. And they made two that were, I considered perfect, okay? The first was Hereditary with uh, Tony Collette. And the second was Midsummer, which really launched the career of Florence Pugh, okay? Um, and these two are both perfect horror movies. Now, what makes them perfect horror movies? Well, they they respect the, they set the rules, they respect the rules, and they tell a narrative quickly with a beginning, a middle, and an end in a reasonable amount of time. And you're like, oh, Scott, what's the big deal about that? Not a lot of people do, right? Like, what's the rules of the of the Friday the Thirteenth? Uh, movies there is no rule they break the rules all the time like there's no rule set right like they're like oh jason could do this jason could do that and people hate the movies now because they're like oh jason's gonna do whatever they want to do in the story there's no rules right and that's the difference like a24 is like we're gonna tell you a story right and we're gonna exp we're gonna establish the rules we're gonna follow the rules and you are gonna be able to logically see what's coming and in a horror movie that is terrifying here's the second one and I, this is this gets weird, but I'm going to go there because you're on Scott Garibay's channel. I'm an evangelical Christian. Guess what? <laughs> Pay attention now. <laughs> if you watch uh, Hereditary, Midsummer, right? And we're going to talk about Talk to Me in a minute, but it follows the same the same formula, right? This is a this is a horror movie that a evangelical Christian will will co-sign everything in your film. They'll be like, oh yeah, hundred percent everything you just said in that movie. That will straight up happen, right? Like, and basically, the people who wrote these movies actually know about the occult, and they know about demons and how demons actually work, right? And you're like, Scott, what do you mean actually work? I'm an evangelical Christian, right? Like, I'm on the other side, baby, right? Like, I've seen miracles, right? Now I'm blessed. I ain't never seen a demon in my life, right? Um, but I've seen supernatural power on the good side, right? And you're Scott. Can you prove it? No, I can't prove it to you. I believe by faith, right? But I can tell you right now, I know I live in a supernatural world. I have seen many, many prayers answered, you know, and the hand of God is clear as day to me, right? And I'm blessed because I'm protected by Jesus and that's why I don't see the demonic parts, but I sure as heck know they're there, right? So these people who are show, who, like A24's Hereditary and A24 Midsummer, this is all demonic material and it is like, it's like it was written straight out of the Bible, right? But it was not written by Christians, but it's people who understand it and it follows the rules. So I was so terrified. Hereditary is my favorite, my favorite horror movie. I watched it once and I ain't never watched it again. Okay? It's it scared me to, it scared me to death, right? But it stayed with me. And I'm like, that's the best horror movie I've ever seen. And when they did Midsummer, I went and saw that, and that terrified me as well, right? 
And then I was like, wait a second. These people, A24 is dealing with people who legit are deep into the occult and fully understand demonism, right? And so when, when Talk To Me came out, I was like, I'm not seeing that. And I had a regal movie pass. I could have went and seen it for weeks. And I'm like, I'm not seeing that uh, because it would scare it would scare me, right? Really badly because I think it's real. It's not a story. It's telling it's telling the framework of modern demonism, right? Modern demonic uh, intervention on Earth, right? And that's very frightening to me. So how did I end up watching Talk to Me when I decided not to, right? Well, uh, I got together and had lunch with an old friend, and um, and hey, you know me, man. I'm Scott Garibay. I'm not the greatest friend, right? I have a lot of friends, but I struggle to be anyone's friend. And so, you know, I had already had, you know, some type of dust up with this person in the, in, you know, and I was just trying to continue to build up my relationship and keep them strong, keep it strong with them. So we went out for lunch and then I, you know, uh, I had a vacation day and I said to my friend, I was like, Hey, you want to go see a movie? Right. And so then we looked with our Regal Pass and there was literally nothing playing that we hadn't already seen. Right. And I was like, well, hey, you can come over to my house and we'll just watch something on, on the telly. Right. So we did that. We came back and he was really excited because a lot of people think that when I'm not spending time with them, it's because I don't want to spend time with them. It's actually because I'm a very busy person. Right. And also it's hard to read me like, I, you know, old, by, I don't know if you know this, but older males struggle to have friends and keep friends and be friends. Right. It's not just me. It's definitely a thing. You can find a lot of people talking about it. Right. And, and a lot of people say, oh, your dad's the guy who has no friends. Right. And spends his time in a tool shed. Right. Like and I'm trying to not do that. I'm trying to keep friendships, but they're it's hard. It's very hard to keep friendships in the world today. I find because everybody's under strain, including us. So we go over and my friend's like, oh, I know what we want to watch. Let's talk. Let's watch that movie with the hand. And the moment he said it, I knew what it was because I had already watched a ton of reviews about it. And I was super hyped for the film, but I was like, I can't go see that because it's just literally a blueprint of modern, modern dynamic, demonic intervention in our world, right? But, my, but uh, you know, my friend was excited to see it. It was literally like a movie that I was hyper interested in, but I just decided not to see. But I was like, you know what? Bet. I'm in. Let's watch it. We watched it. It is a phenomenally good. It's it is top three a24 right it, it's in this order get this it's in this order right a24 hereditary is the best horror movie that's ever been made period end of sentence i will I, that is the hill i will i will fight you on right like right and then second um is talk to me talk to me is actually better than midsummer right because midsummer is not really american and, and i don't know why this one was australian but it felt very american to me Right, uh, but but uh, Midsummer's very European, right? Which it's a great horror film, but I'd rather have an American horror film. And weirdly, this Australian horror film is more American than the Midsummer one. So it's so, and those three movies are the three best horror movies ever made, right? But the point is, I ended up watching a horror movie I had decided not to watch, right? And I feel like I definitely don't think there's a lot of these people, but I definitely think there are people who look at Dungeons and Dragons like a horror movie right and like it was like what do you mean like a horror movie what are you talking about right and it is it is very fascinating like what do i mean about this horror movie thing right so let's get all the way there right why would it be horrific to be end up being a dungeon master well the biggest reason is if, if you're a chad right like so basically now i would love to make this non-gendered but everybody knows what Chad is. And right now, there's no, like, uh, you know, remember Mary Sue? Well, then we had this term, Gary Stu, right? Like, uh, you know, it was the male version of a Mary Sue. We don't have any male version of a Chad yet. I don't, I don't know if there is one, right? But you know what a Chad is, and I don't know what a Chad is. And if you don't know what a Chad is, I can't take the time to define it here. So let's say you're a Chad. Now, now I, I guess I will do some definition. Chad is a guy who can get a date always, period, end of sentence and actually can get multiple dates, get multiple women to date him at the same time, right? You cannot be a dungeon master and be a Chad. You cannot, right? And so let's say you're a Chad, right? And right now your life is filled with, you know, four different women, all who date you. None of you, none of, uh, none of them have labels on it. None of them call you your girlfriend, but you're, you know, spending time with them, right? Now I know Chads, right? Like I know quite a few of them, right? None of them do any geeky stuff. They don't board game. 
they don't dungeon master or anything like that. And the reason why is it's fundamentally uncool, right? Why? What do you mean, Scott? What's uncool about being a dungeon master? Well, here we go. Okay. Uh, basically, Ryan Reynolds is the definition of cool. You know how he got there? Because he's played many times the chat. You know what's definitionally Chad like? Not caring much about anything, right? And the and the dungeon master is the opposite of that. The dungeon master is the guy who cares deeply about everything. Right. Once you're, once you're a dungeon master, you need to know how to create worlds. You need to be able to shift into multiple identities. And that means you need to be able to get into your in touch with your feminine side. You need to literally be able to act like a woman in seconds after acting like a barbarian. Right. And you need to know about botany and you need to know about economics and you need to know about biopolitics and you need to know about weapons and you need to know about history. Right. And you don't, and you can't one cheek any of it. You can't not care very much about any of it. It consumes your life, right? And you end up having libraries and you end up talking to people about, you know, emotion and, uh, you know, and intellect and spirit and a whole bunch of things that chads don't talk about. And they're incredibly attractive to women because they're the strong silent type. Dungeon Masters are not silent, right? If you spend all your day learning about this world, the next world, and worlds you're building, you talk to people about it. You talk to people about every single thing, and you are the most unchad person ever. So I think there are people, chads, and I think there's other groups of people. There are other groups of people who right now give off normie vibes, right? And their normal friends like them because they chug a beer and you know, uh, and can do normal things and watch football, right? Like, like once you become a dungeon master, you're not going to watch football anymore. Now you could be a one cheek. You could be a bad dungeon master and watch a lot of football, but, but dungeon masters don't watch football, right? Like it's just like, or any other professional sport, right? It's just not, it's not, it's not part of what we do, right? Like, and the reason why we're like, I'm not going to sit here and watch four hours of mainstream content, right? Like, Cause I got worlds to build, right? And I don't, I'm not about the niche. I'm about the incredibly arcane, no pun intended. You understand what I'm saying? Right? Like, it, it, it goes deep, man. This goes deep, right? And so I think there are people who, when, you know, their friends like, hey, why don't you go play in our Dungeons and Dragons game? They're terrified. And they should be. They should be, right? You're seen as a normie now. You're a muggle now. You don't want to go through the nine and three quarters gate, baby, because you're right, right? You know what's going to happen first? You're going to get stuck at some table where you now know, right? You've read 3,000 pages of Dungeons and Dragons uh, lore, right? And you're like, oh, you know, I know how to build a world and, uh, and I can have people come here and we can play Dungeons and Dragons and this is about cutting goblins in half. That's just the start, baby. You'll be there for three, five years. Then you're going to be here on Scott Garibay's channel saying Dungeons and Dragons is the most important secular thing on the planet. More powerful than science, more powerful than uh, than content, right? More powerful than politics, more powerful than anything you've ever experienced, right? And that what Dungeons and Dragons really is, is an identity engine, which is going to allow you to live multiple lives on this planet while the rest of the sad sack muggles around you get one heart, one mouth, one mind, and that this will be a different level, right? This is talk to me, I let you in. You understand it is a different level of being. And, and I think many people are like, when they hear, hey, do you wanna play Dungeons and Dragons? They're like, wait a second. Isn't that a multiverse? Like, wouldn't I have to learn literally the lore of a hundred worlds? Yes. Bye, Chad.